In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this animation blending stop motion and 2D animation in After Effects. This project file and asset are available to download for free down in the description so you can play along at home. The theme and inevitable title of this animation is When Life Gives You Melons. I started by making the object that we're going to animate in stop motion. In this case, our proud wedge of melon. I sculpted this using polymer clay, super sculpy to be precise, and then I cooked it in the oven to make it set. Piping hot melon is a delight if you've never tried it before, you'll never look back. Then I primed it with a spray primer and painted it with acrylic paint. But obviously you don't need to go through all of this trouble, you can use any object or toy that you have lying around. Now to animate in stop motion, we have to take a photo, move our object slightly, then take another photo, and repeat. And when all of that is done and played back, it gives the illusion of movement. Now I set mine up for shooting in this mini photo studio that was $20 on Amazon. I'm also using a free version of the app called Stop Motion, but you can just use your camera app and you don't need a mini photo studio. You can just blue tack a piece of white card to a wall so it curves and then sit near a window to get some nice lighting. You don't need to spend any money to make stop motion animation. But the benefit of the stop motion app is that it lets you play back your animation as you're making it. But most importantly, it lets you see a faded view of your previous shots so you can make sure your object lines up. Exactly like Onion Skin's work if you're familiar with frame by frame animation. Now this is the first test I did using my phone and it came out okay. The quality was fine, but the biggest issue is that I didn't have enough frames. I didn't take enough photos when the watermelon was rolling forward. It's at this point here between these two frames. When we play it back, it just sort of snaps into that second position and doesn't feel like a smooth roll. So I went back and shot it again a second time using smaller steps between the motion. And I figured I could always remove the extra frames later if I took too many shots. So this is my second try. And this time I'm using my DSLR, not my phone and without the stop motion app, just so I could compare the two. Now, obviously this one came out much, much better. And I learned in this process that spending more time during the filming process really pays off. My instinct when I first did it was to just rush through it because I thought, well, this is tedious. It's stop motion. I'm just taking a photo and moving an object. Let's just get this done as quick as possible. But in reality, filming this rotation took less than 10 minutes. And that 10 minutes is actually probably one of the shortest parts of this project and definitely has the biggest impact on the quality of the overall result. So when you're having to pick your battles of what to spend time on, if you're doing stop motion, spend time to make sure the filming looks right. Because if that part doesn't look right, that's gonna flow through to every other area in the project. Okay, but how did we turn our photos into this animation? So let's start from scratch. So once you've taken your photos, they're on your computer, import them into After Effects. Now you could import them as an image sequence, but I think that makes it a bit trickier to edit. So I prefer just to drag them into an empty comp. Now this comp is 12 frames per second, which I think works great for stop motion. And let's scale all of these down so they fit in our window. So with all of our layers selected and my playhead at the very start of the comp, I'm gonna press Alt and right square bracket, which will trim them all down to be one frame long. And then we're gonna right click, select keyframe assistant and sequence layers and hit okay. And that's gonna put all of our layers in this step sequence. And if we play it back, we can see our melon rotating. But now we can see it's jumping all over the place and changing size. And that's because the melon wasn't kept in the same position and I kept moving around when I had to adjust the blue tack. So we're gonna to need to stabilize and adjust all of these frames, which you might not need to do depending on how well you shot yours. So now let's line them up easier and sort of stabilize it. So to do that, I'm gonna duplicate one of our frames, extend it all the way to the end of the sequence, turn its transparency down. So now I can use it as a bit of a guide and then select our other layers, move it into position and scale it down and continue to do that with all of them. So they maintain the same scale and position throughout. There, I'm gonna to jump to one I prepared earlier because that is a bit of a tedious process. And then we're gonna add a simple color grade by creating a new adjustment layer with a control Alt Y, adding the curves effect. And really here, I think we just need to increase the brightness. There, that's looking good. Now to remove the background. We do that many ways, but the way I'm gonna do it so I have the most control is to create a new solid with control Y, select the pen tool, draw a rough shape of our wedge and select its blending mode to stencil alpha. And that is gonna sort of cut out our object and everything not within the shape will be transparent. We turn on our transparency grid and we can see that in action. So I wanna make sure this lines up exactly with our melon as close as possible open up its mask properties, and then every frame adjust that to match the shape of the melon and the eyes and mouth as well. This again is another tedious process, so it's a bit of a time lapse of me doing it the first time. 
And depending on how you shot this, you might be able to use a roto effect or use a color key to extract the background like a green screen. Or you might not need to remove the background at all, in which case your job is much easier. Now where the melon is touching the ground with the blue tack and it's casting some shadows, I had to be a little more precise, so I did that on another pass. There, we've got our watermelon all separated in this comp with a transparent background. We've got a bit of a white edge on some of the areas at the top and the side, but that's fine for our purposes because that's going to be covered up with our expanding shapes anyway. So now we've got a rolling watermelon, which we can essentially use as a piece of footage in a final animation now. So I've got that melon stop motion comp inside a new comp called Melon Main. And to create that pattern of the bursting out colors, we're going to do that on a new shape layer. And this will be similar to our masking process. We are just going to draw a rough outline of our watermelon. I'm being much simpler here because we don't need the outline of the lips or the eyes or anything like that. We do not want this one to be as detailed. And then open up its shape path properties and then keyframe its path every frame so it kind of lines up with our melon. You might want to turn down the transparency so you can see it a bit clearer. And I know this is another tedious process, but the animation's only one and a half seconds long. It honestly doesn't take that much time, especially when you get on a roll. Okay, so when that's finished, this is what that will look like. We've got a shape whose path matches our watermelon outline. Now to animate that radiating out, we're gonna open up its properties down here, select add and choose offset paths. We open that up, we've got a few properties down here and we're gonna animate the amount. And what that essentially does is expand and retract our shape, which is very handy. So let's start with it at about 10, keyframe it there. And then at the end of the animation, let's zoom out and increase it until it fills up the whole screen about 850 for me. And let's also drag this underneath our melon stop motion layer. So now you can see a bit clearer what is happening. And one thing I did not like at all is these corners, far too pointy, much too violent for me. So in order to soften those, we can do the very quick trick of adding a blur. Let's choose a Gaussian blur. Let's blur that all the way up to 50. Then add a levels effect. Select the alpha channel, which is the transparency channel. We want to drag in the outside arrows to the very center so it crushes the alpha channel and gets rid of that fade and makes it a nice hard edge. And because we've got that blur in there, essentially softens all of our corners, which makes it much friendlier for our lovely melon chap. If you're finding this video useful, please give it a like. It is incredibly free and helps me and the channel tremendously. I really appreciate it. And let me know in the comments what other workflow videos you'd like me to tackle in the future. And one quick thing I do want to mention is I'm going to be part of the jury at this year's MSI Create Rewards, who are coincidentally the wonderful sponsors for this video. This year's theme is tech meets aesthetic. So create something on that theme and you can win some of their amazing grand prizes like their top of the range laptops, monitors and desktop PCs from MSI. You can submit any new work or work created in the last year that fits that theme. I'll be on the panel for the graphic design category, which includes 2D design, illustration and motion graphics. And there are also categories for 3D creation and film too. So there's something for everyone. Entries are open now and close midnight May 31st. Check the link in the description for more details. Back to the melon. Now to fill out this whole background and give the variation with different colors, we are going to need to duplicate this layer. We're going to do that twice with Control or Command D. So we have three in total. Let's select them all and press U on our keyboard to bring up all of their keyframe properties. And the first thing we're going to do is change the color of these. So let's change the fill from this first one to a dark green. The next one will make a lighter green and the very top one we're going to make pure white. And that's the reason I didn't mind having a bit of white edges around our watermelon because we're not going to be able to tell when we're adding our extra white outline anyway. And let's also change these layer colors to a dark green. Let's change this one to a pale pink, which will represent white. And while we're here, rename them because we always label our layers. And at the moment, they're just stacked on top of each other. So all we can see is the top layer. But to get them in a sequence, we just need to delay them. So I'm going to grab the keyframes from the offset path property and I'm gonna move these over to the right. So light green starts animating after the dark green and then make the white layer animate further after that. So now they're animating one after each other, expanding outwards. Great, so now we just need to fill up the rest of the comp with these. So let's select these all again, duplicate with Command or Control D. I'm gonna press Control and right square bracket to bring them all above our layer, drag them all above these ones, open up the keyframes, select all of these offset path keyframes and delay these as well. 
So now they're filling up all the comp, but when it goes back to start the loop, our comp background is empty again. So we need to fill these up from the beginning. Now we just need to do the same process, duplicating these and move these backwards to the left. But that gets a bit tricky because we can't really see the keyframes before or the first frame of our animation. So what I like to do is to just drag the work area and make it start one second in. And let's drag all of our layers and let them start one second in now too. So now we can duplicate all these layers again. Let's put these ones at the bottom select all of those keyframes on that offset path property and this time drag them over to the left like this so by starting the work area at one second in it's just easier to grab and adjust these keyframes now that we can you know access them over here before the animation starts there now our background is done now i have noticed this comp is a 24 frames per second comp and our stop motion is playing back at 12 frames per second so I'm going to create a new adjustment layer with control alt y and add our trusty effect posterize time Set that to 12 frames per second. So now everything is playing back at the same frame rate. Excellent. Now on to the walk cycle. Now walk cycles are a huge topic in themselves. So I can't go into all of the details in this video because it would go on for at least 90 more minutes before I even said the word leg. But yes, I will be doing a deep dive into walk cycles in my upcoming course. So shameless plug for that here too. But I do want to give you an overview of the process. So the first thing that I like to animate is normally the character's hips. But in this case, melon has no hips, so it'll be the melon's body, or really the whole melon. And we just need to animate its position property, bobbing up and down with a bit of easing like this. Let's also grab all of our wedge layers. We can press U to hide their keyframes now. We don't need to see that. And parent those to our melon stop motion layer. And they've gone a bit out of sync, so let's just nudge them down to line them up. There. Now they are all in sync and our lines are following our melon. And then I like to do the rough animation for a walk cycle frame by frame. So I hid these background layers and animated just our watermelon bouncing as reference and imported that into Photoshop. Now you can use any frame by frame software. They all work pretty much the same. And if you're just doing roughs, animate in what you're most comfortable in. I am most comfortable in Photoshop and that is partly because it has this great free plugin called Anim Desin 2. It is sadly no longer supported, which is why I'm using Photoshop 2018. And 2018 was a excellent vintage for Photoshop, so no complaints from me there. But despite being unsupported, the developer has done an amazing job with this. And if you can manage to get it working on your version of Photoshop, which can be a bit tricky, uh, well done and enjoy. But again, all frame by frame stuff is pretty much the same, if I'm gonna be honest. As long as you can draw frames and see onion skins, that's all you need. So I started off at a really low frame rate just using the basic poses. We've got the down pose, the passing pose, the up pose, and the contact pose. And this is what that looks like. And once I'm happy with the rough shape of these, I go in on the next layer and add the in-between frames in between each of those. And these were still a bit too rough. So I did another pass paying more attention to the arcs of the feet. So they went bobbing all over the place like they are here. What a mess. So I like to draw out the path of the motion of the feet, which helps with that. And I ended up with a much smoother motion using that guide. So then I hid the watermelon layer and rendered out these legs as reference for After Effects. I imported those rough legs into After Effects and now they are ready to clean up with some shape layers. And my process for that is to just grab my pen tool, make sure it has no fill and a stroke. And I'm going to trace over one of our legs, keyframe its path property, and then every frame adjust that to match our roughs. And because this is only three points, this goes much faster than you'd think. And this is what the end result of that looks like. Then I added feet using shape layers, which I decided to turn into boots to give the watermelon just a bit more character. And I did initially plan to give my watermelon arms that were sticking out like this, kind of like SpongeBob when he's singing his I'm ready motif. But I decided against it because I thought it just was a bit too confusing. Made the composition a bit too busy and there's already a lot of things going on in here. So I figured it was better without it. And there our loop is done. Now it took a decently long time, I'll be honest. Partly because animation in general takes a long time, but stop motion and frame by frame animation in particular do add to that. But because we took that time, we've got a pretty unique looking result. And I find it a really satisfying process bringing different skills and techniques into one project. Especially the sculpting and painting part, which I haven't done in an animation before. And I find that a really fun process. And of course you can download the project file for free to have a deeper dive and sign up to my newsletter to be the first to hear new information about my upcoming course. Also, don't forget to submit your work to the MSI Creator Awards. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.